Hi, Dave Cass here with QA1. We're installing a level two handling kit on the Chevelle here behind me. And we're gonna actually focus in on the rear suspension just a little bit, get this thing installed. Now we're gonna do the rear coilover system, which again, you could use in the kit, or if you wanna buy this separate, you can too. It will intermix with the factory components. That's no issue at all. Now, installation of this, or the assembly of the shock for that matter, seems pretty straightforward, but let's cover a few basic topics. Now, first and foremost, you're gonna have the shock, which is in my left hand. And when you start installation, you're going to start with the lower jam nut, and that simply just threads on here. And that will just thread down the length of the shock body. You're going to see a small shoulder on this jam nut. That's always going to face upwards. So I usually put it down about, you know, down towards the bottom there. The second item you want to thread on, this is going to be your spring seat. This is going to be what the actual spring is going to sit on. And what you're going to see is you're going to see a shoulder there that's going to keep the spring centered to make sure it doesn't walk around on its collar. All right, now that you have that done, now is a very important step that a lot of people forget to do. It's using anti-seize, and what you want to do is you want to coat the threads in the area for which you're going to be adjusting. Now, you want to do this with any aluminum shock on the market because with the collars being aluminum and also the shock body being aluminum, it gives you potential to have some galling. And when you get some spring pressure against there, you really want to make sure that you try to make it as easy as possible to move. So we recommend a Permatex base anti It works really well. Um, there's others on the market that work too. Um, but things like WD-40, just don't, they don't have the viscosity needed for a project like this. So now that we have that all put together, we're going to put a thrust bearing kit on. Now this was included with the level two handling kit. You start with a thin washer that slides right over the shock like this. And you have a Torrington bearing. This basically has little needle bearings on it. And the reason why the needle bearings are helpful is because the needle bearings allow for the spring, when you make adjustments, to rotate nice and freely. It just doesn't drag across the spring seat. And your third item, that's going to be your final spring seat. So now this will move nice and freely when you put your spring on. So your next item is going to be that of your spring. And that just slides right over like that. And your last item is going to be your spring cap. And that just slides on like you see there. You just press everything down and your coilover shock is assembled. All right, next step of installing the rear coilover kit on this Chevelle is we're going to start taking the factory components out. Now, movie magic, we already started taking some of the nuts and bolts out, just making sure none of them were problematic for us. So dropping these guys here is quite easy. Actually, once you get everything unbolted, and the nice thing about these cars is the factory springs usually are not too terribly difficult to get out. Just take a little bit of wiggling and they'll pop right out. Now, the lower shock mount here, what we're going to do is we're going to get this removed. And this is where the rear lower bracket for the clover kit is going to bolt up. Now, the bracket does a couple of things. It actually reinforces the mount for the coilover purpose. We don't just want to hang it on the shock bolt because that's going to be a single shear system then. And you're going to run into some, I guess, some potentials for maybe the shock itself actually, uh, say, overstressing that mount. Now, the rear bracket installation is actually quite simple. So the main bolt here you see on the bottom, this is going to locate where the factory bolt did. But you're going to have to drill one hole. We've already done that here. So what you do is you, you first line everything up, and the instructions will come with the diagram to show you how to do that. And you want to set the bracket so it's perpendicular to the axle. Now a way to find that, that can be quite easy, is actually just take a straight edge. And you can actually reference off of the axle itself, square that up, and you can actually find your center point. Um, that's quite nice and easy to do it that way. Angle finders work too. There's a variety of different ways to do that. And once you have that lower bracket in place, punch your hole and then just drill it out. And then you're just going to bolt that in place and you're going to be set for your lower mount. All right, guys, now that we have our lower bracket in place, we're going to focus in on our upper bracket. Now, installation on this is actually quite easy. And so QA1, uh, QA1 supplies the upper bracket ready to go. Now, when you look at this bracket, these two holes right here, 
are actually going to go into the exact same pickup points as your factory shock bolt up to. They're going to be basically your reference holes. This third hole right here is one you need to drill. So in order to do this properly, make sure it's located properly, what you're going to want to do is you're going to hold it up in this channel and you're going to focus on those two holes originally and reference off of those, bolt that in place, then where this third hole is, you're going to use a center punch, you're going to mark the spot up in that channel, remove the bracket, drill your hole, and then you're going to bolt it up um, one last final time. So pretty simple process. We'll get this knocked out real quick and move on. All right, the last and final step in getting the rear clover kit installed on the Chevelle, it, now we have the upper bracket and lower bracket in place, is we're going to go ahead and get the shock installed here. And pretty simple, you'll see right where the shock index is, you're going to run your bolts through the bottom and then up through the top as well and you're all done. All right, so we continue on with the installation of our stage two handling kit on the 69 Chevelle. And we're gonna focus in on the rear upper trailing arms. This is a tubular based design. And the stage two kits, you have a non-adjustable arm where the stage three comes with an adjustable style arm. Now to get these installed, one thing to really note is where your Zerk fitting is placed for greasing these. You don't wanna face it upwards in the vehicle because you'll never get to the grease fitting. You wanna make sure when you install it, you do it with the grease fitting facing down. That way when you do maintenance to the vehicle, you can get uh, quick clear access to that. Installation is pretty much a breeze. We already installed the bushing into the um, differential housing. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this up in the slot. It'll slide up in there. And what you'll need to do a lot of times is you might need the assistance of a screw jack to kind of help pitch the axle a little bit. You might have to put it underneath the rear pin or the pinion on it to change the pinion angle to get that to slide in. Because when you take the trailing arms out, you only don't want to do one at a time. You start taking out multiple trailing arms at one time, that axle has a lot of movement in it. And getting everything lined back up might be a little bit of a hiccup. All right, we're continuing on with the installation of our stage two kit here on our Chevelle. Now, next area of focus, we're gonna do our lower trailing arms. Now, what we're gonna do is we've already got the nuts and bolts loosened up on this lower one here. What you need to note here is that through the factory frame rail, there is a provision for you to get a socket head onto the inside of the bolt. So make sure you use that trying to get this thing out. So once you get everything freed up though, typically pretty easy to get everything loosened up. The arm can drop on down. And then once it drops down, kind of a little bit of a finagling game to get your fingers up through there. And sometimes it's helpful if you have a punch or a even a magnet to help push through the original screw or bolt, sorry. All right, next step is installing the QA1 lower trailing arm. Now what I usually do is I usually start with doing the rear mount first. Um, I find that easier. And what you want to do is you want to slide this up through the slot here in the frame rail. And what I find easy is if you take the original bolt and you, first you can kind of peer through the little access hole that was there from factory. And if you take the bolt and you put it inside a deep wall socket, allows you to slide that up through there. Then it allows you then pretty easy access to slide up to the front end. And that's uh, basics of the installation of the lower trailing arm. Get all the nuts and bolts tight and you can move on to the front. All right guys, we're continuing on with our installation of our level two handling kit on this Chevelle. We're gonna start tackling the front suspension. So we have your upper and lower uh, control arms we're gonna take care of. We're gonna get rid of the factory shock and spring and uh, start getting the QA1 parts assembled on here. So first thing is, let's get rid of the factory shock. Let's get that thing out of here. Um, you're gonna have one nut up top. You're gonna have two nuts down below on the T-bar. So we're gonna start up top by getting that top nut off. And we're gonna get the lower mounts off then as well. Again, the installation of all these parts in all reality can be done on your garage floor with just a basic set of hand tools. In all reality, a, you know, a socket set with a decent assortment of sockets and some wrenches is really all you need for installation on this. You don't need any fancy tools.
Now the next step would be breaking the ball joints loose and dropping the factory spring. Now please use caution when you do this. Um, there's a lot of stored energy here with this spring. What we're going to do is we're going to drop this down close to the floor and help assist the lower control arm down with the use of a floor jack. Now you can see on this control arm here that bushings have seen better days. Um, kind of torn up, there's some dry rotting, cracking, some binding issues, and like we covered earlier, you know, you're going to have some ball joints that are, you know, a little bound up. This one barely moves at all, uh, really doing no good your suspension at all. So getting the QA1 stuff on here is going to be a big, big improvement on this car. Now that we have the factory control arms out on the table, comparing them next to the QA1 control arms, it really is a no comparison in terms of what you're getting for your money. So the stamp steel arms, obviously you have a rusty, crusty arm here. Bushings are dry rotted, cracked, need some attention. Ball joints are, you know, completely shot for that matter. The tubular base control arm here that you're looking at is going to be a lot stronger. The improved geometry is phenomenal, especially for handling base characteristics that you're looking for. But let's just look at what you're getting here with the coilover addition, but also the factory style uh, spring. Look how long this spring is. It's definitely a bear to get in and out of the car. Um, doesn't give you any ride height adjustability characteristics and the QA1 coilover system really capitalizes on that and gives you lots of advantages. So taking this spring aside and looking at the factory arm here, this is a QA1 coilover shock that a lot of people have come to know. This shock here it can be easily be adapted to not only the QA1 control arms, but also to the um, factory control arms. Again, if you're going to buy a kit that's going to be a front to rear system on your vehicle, keep in mind that you can do it in stages. And if you want to keep your lower control arms factory for various reasons, you can do that. That's no issue at all. Because the factory, or sorry, the QA1 coilover will bounce back in the factory holes. It sits on top of the control arm. It can take that weight, no issue at all. Or the um, T-bar on the bottom is held in by a C-clip on either side. You pop the C-clip out and what you can do is take this uh, adapter bracket which goes in the QA1 control arm and this coilover shock that you once had installed in the factory arm will now adapt straight to the tuba or QA1 tubular control arm. It's a, it's a breeze, really simple to do that. And the reason why these plates are removable, which is a really key point, is because not everybody's going to be doing a coilover. So if you still want to use a factory style spring, you can do that and we make a plate for a factory spring. So it gives people a lot of options, a lot of different uh, um, ways to customize the kit that you know more tailors to their needs. All right, now that the lower control arm is out of the car, time to install the QA1 control arm. Now you can see we already put the QA1 shock on the control arm. We find it easiest, then you can set the spring on top. And then we'll put the car a little bit closer to the ground and we'll use a floor jack to help assist the whole assembly back up into its spot. All right, now that we're ready to install the coilovers in the car, I um, want to point out on the spring, they are available in different rates, and that is to accompany different um, vehicle weights, this one being a aluminum head small block. This is a great spring for, this is a 400 pound spring, this is great for a handling base build for a uh, vehicle such as this weight. So to get this installed, I already have the shock bolt to lower control arm, and what we're going to do is we're going to use this floor jack here. And once I put the spring on, we're going to use the floor jack to help guide everything back up into its place. On the top of the shock, I already installed the washer, a bushing, and it's got an exposed stud, which will go up through the factory hole that there um, was from factory. So let's go ahead and get going on this. So that concludes the installation of the level two handling kit here on the Chevelle. So we got the upper control arm on, we got the sway bar on, lower control arm, we have the coilover kit, you name it. We got the whole rear system taken care of. So last but not least, we'll get this thing on the ground, get it aligned, and this thing's off to go out and driving. So if you guys want more information on this kit and many others for your cars, make sure to check out summitracing.com.